In 1997, a unique sight appeared in the skies above Russia. It was unlike any other fighter jet, a sleek, futuristic aircraft with its wings angled forward instead of backward. That plane was the Sukhoi Su-47, also known as the Berkut or Golden Eagle. This forward-swept wing design wasn't entirely new, but the Russians were the first to make it work on a modern fighter jet. With the Su-47, Sukhoi aimed to push the envelope, not just by creating a cutting-edge aircraft, but by proving that Russia could lead the world in aviation innovation. The Su-47 wasn't just an aircraft, it was a statement. Sukhoi was going to beat out their rivals at MiG and dominate the fifth-generation fighter jet race. The 1980s were a time of high ambition and intense competition in Soviet aviation. With a military eager to match the U.S. Navy's capabilities, the Soviet Navy set its sights on a new jet fighter. This wasn't just about adding another aircraft to its fleet. It was about building a weapon that would redefine Russia's air defense capabilities. Enter Sukhoi's S-22 project, later known as the Su-27KM. Designed for naval use, it was to be a heavyweight fighter working alongside the Yak-141, a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This was Russia's answer to the ever-advancing U.S. fleet. But like many ambitious Soviet projects, it was interrupted by the fall of the USSR, which put a halt to the funding that had kept Sukhoi's dreams alive. As the Soviet Union dissolved, it became clear that projects like the S-22 were financially unsustainable. But Sukhoi didn't abandon the idea. The design was saved, a futuristic prototype tucked away for another day. The engineers at Sukhoi saw this as their chance to bring a forward-swept wing fighter to life. A risky, radical design that could make Sukhoi the undisputed king in Russian aviation. Ironically, though, the idea for this radical design didn't originate in Russia. It traces back to World War II, specifically Nazi Germany. In the closing years of World War II, the Nazis were experimenting with a jet bomber known as the Junkers Ju-287, which featured forward-swept wings. This design wasn't just about aesthetics, it was an attempt to outrun Allied fighters by reducing drag and increasing speed. However, without the advanced composite materials we have today, the forward-swept wings couldn't handle the stress of high-speed flight. They twisted and bent under pressure, rendering the design impractical. The concept was shelved, but not forgotten. Allied engineers, including Russians, took note of the design. Once an idea like that gets into the minds of engineers, it's tough to shake, and it would eventually find a home in Sukhoi's future designs. Decades later, in 1984, American aerospace company Grumman brought this idea back to life with the X-29. This experimental jet, funded by NASA and the U.S. Air Force, was the first to successfully use forward-swept wings, thanks to composite materials like carbon fiber, which provided the strength needed to make the design viable. The X-29 demonstrated that a forward-swept wing fighter could work. This breakthrough was a turning point for Soviet engineers, who now had the proof they needed that a design they dreamed of since World War II could be achieved with modern technology. While Grumman was working on the X-29, the Soviets launched two ambitious programs of their own, the MFI, the Multi-Role Frontline Fighter, and the LFI, the Light Frontline Fighter. These were intended to create new fighters to counter the U.S. military's latest advancements. MiG won the contract for the MFI, which would later become the MiG 1.44. But Sukhoi wasn't about to back down. Determined to prove the forward-swept wing concept, they pressed forward independently, deciding to develop their own fighter without government funding. This decision was a huge gamble, akin to Boeing's risk with the 707. If it paid off, it would cement Sukhoi's place at the forefront of Russian aviation innovation. Thus, the S-37 project was born, later renamed the Su-47. By 1997, the Su-47 was ready for its first flight. The engineers had managed to overcome the challenges of the forward-swept wing design, using composite materials for about 90% of the wings. 
This allowed the Su-47 to achieve high maneuverability without sacrificing fuel efficiency. Large canards were mounted at the front to improve control, and two Solovive D-30 F-6 engines powered the plane. These engines, which also powered the MiG-31, provided over 93 kilonewtons of thrust each, allowing the Su-47 to reach speeds over a Mach 2.2. This speed and agility put it on par with top fighters like the Su-35 and the F-22, making it one of the most maneuverable jets ever built. The Su-47's armament was equally impressive. Its rotating launcher could carry advanced R-77 missiles, giving it formidable air-to-air -air capabilities. This rotating mechanism was similar to how bombers carry cruise missiles, ensuring that the Su-47 could reload and engage multiple targets efficiently. The jet could also be equipped with additional fuel tanks or air-to-ground ordnance on its wing hardpoints, making it versatile for different combat scenarios. To complement its missile loadout, the Su-47 also featured a 30mm cannon, solidifying its role as an air superiority fighter. Even its design elements were futuristic. The air ducts were shaped in an S-curve to reduce the radar cross-section, giving it a touch of stealth although it wasn't quite as stealthy as an F-22. The tail booms housed electronic countermeasures equipment, providing additional protection against radar-guided threats. The Su-47 also featured a glass cockpit with side-mounted controls, a design feature more commonly found in Western jets. And to cut costs, some components, like the landing gear, were borrowed from the Su-27 family. The public got its first glimpse of the Su-47 at the 1999 MAX Air Show, where it made an immediate impact. The forward-swept wings and aggressive design captured imaginations, establishing the Su-47 as an icon of Russian aviation. Over the next few years, the Su-47 would complete numerous test flights, proving its capabilities and demonstrating that forward-swept wings were more than just a gimmick. They were a functional, high-performance feature. Despite its groundbreaking design, the Su-47 faced limitations. Funding was tight, and technical issues began to emerge at high speeds. These limitations prevented the Su-47 from achieving its full potential, and with limited resources, Sukhoi couldn't make all the necessary improvements. In 2001, the aircraft was officially redesignated as the Su-47 Berkut, or Golden Eagle in recognition of its unique design and ambitious engineering. By 2002, the Su-47 had completed over 150 test flights, gathering valuable data that would influence the development of future Russian fighters. While the Su-47 proved its worth as a test platform, the Russian government had other priorities. Sukhoi was eventually chosen to lead the PAC-FA program, which aimed to develop a new fifth-generation fighter. This program would ultimately produce the Su-57, Russia's first operational stealth fighter. However, the Su-47 didn't become Russia's fifth-generation fighter. Instead, the government chose to continue developing the Su-35 as a more traditional, cost-effective solution. Although the Su-47 wasn't selected for mass production, it played a crucial role in advancing Russian aviation. It served as a testing ground for cutting-edge technologies, including avionics, radar systems, and electronic warfare capabilities. The lessons learned from the Su-47 were invaluable, contributing directly to the development of the Su-57. In this way, the Su-47 fulfilled its purpose, not as a combat-ready fighter, but as an experimental aircraft that paved the way for future Russian jets. By 2009, the Su-47 had become a legacy aircraft, admired by aviation enthusiasts worldwide. Its radical design and ambitious engineering made it a symbol of Sukhoi's resilience and innovation. Although it never entered frontline service, the Su-47 left an indelible mark on aviation history. It was a testament to the ingenuity of Sukhoi's engineers, who dared to push the boundaries of aircraft design in the face of financial and technical challenges. For fans of aviation, the Su-47 remains a source of fascination. Its forward-swept wings and sleek profile give it a distinct look that's both intimidating and beautiful. The Golden Eagle may not have been the game-changing fighter Sukhoi envisioned, 
but it stands as a proud chapter in Russian aviation, a reminder of the Cold War era quest for air superiority and the relentless drive to innovate. While it may never have become a household name like the MiG-29 or the Su-35, the Su-47 has earned its place in the pantheon of aviation icons. Ultimately, the Su-47 represents what can be achieved when engineers are willing to take risks and think outside the box. It's a reminder that even in an age of tight budgets and political constraints, creativity and determination can push the boundaries of what's possible. For Sukhoi and for aviation enthusiasts around the world, the Golden Eagle will always be remembered as a bold, beautiful experiment, a glimpse into what the future of flight could have looked like. In the end, the Su-47 wasn't just a prototype, it was a vision. It may not have entered service, but it laid the groundwork for future innovations and helped shape the path of Russian fighter jet development. The Golden Eagle was ahead of its time.